Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt, this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching A Bronx Tale. What do you know about this movie? Uh, Robert De Niro. Yes. Mafia? I assume another mob mafia type movie. That's all I got. It's been highly recommended pretty much on all of our mob mafia movies, mm -hmm. pretty much on every Robert De Niro movie. I mean, it's been recommended everywhere. Yeah, I'm very excited to watch it solely for how recommended it's been. Yeah, I don't really know anything about this either other than I saw a poster for this and I recognized one of the actors was in The Sopranos for a brief moment. Oh, okay. He was like one of these two teenagers that worked for Christopher for a little bit. Okay. I'm sure you'll recognize him. Yeah, I think I know the two buddy guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Other than that, just super excited. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on our Twitch, Instagram, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the movie. It was 1960. 1960? It felt like there was a doo-wop group on every corner back then. Just gangs of singers? Oh, they're gangs. <laughs> my dad would take me to Yankee Stadium and we would watch the Yankees win. There's my stoop. Stoop kid? Come on, baby. You know I love you. Yeah, it. bullshit. Will you get in the fucking car? Wonderful. The number one man in the neighborhood, Sonny. Sonny. Everybody loves Sonny and they treated him like a god. Seen Sonny in something else? Yeah, he's definitely been in quite a few things we've seen. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, shit. Right back on. Stop looking. That's my dad, Lorenzo Anello. That's me, Calogero, at nine years old. Man, free bus rides? So right upstairs, son. Okay, well. That's my mom, Rosina. She looks familiar, too. She's in The Sopranos. She's... Is she's Artie's wife? Yes. Tony Toupe was the owner of the bar in name only. They called him Tony Toupe because he wore the worst hairpiece in the world. Man, no one likes Tony Toupe. Jojo the well. If you stare at Jojo long enough, you see him get fatter by the hour. <laughs> oh, man. His shadow once killed a dog. <laughs> He's already sweating. Coffee cake because his face looked like a Drake's coffee cake. His name was Jimmy Whispers and he was Sonny's main man. Oh. Because everything was a secret to him. Man, I'm loving all these like names and breakdowns of characters. I'm trying so hard to get everyone's names. I don't remember a single one. Every time I saw Sonny, I would try to imitate him. Sonny had five fingers, but he only used three. You know how many times I have to drive that bus back and forth each day so this family can eat steak once a week? Yeah, steak looks delicious. Stay on the stoop, but keep away from the bar. When you're older, you'll understand why. Take it to Yankee Stadium, center field. Now eat your steak. Yeah. Dang, steak and a baseball game? What a dad. That's Phil the Peddler. And me and my friends would love to break his balls. Just their walk. Add some tomatoes or apples. Nobody's cooler than you, Sonny. Fuck you, you scumbag! You're a real motherfucker! Oh! <gasps> oh! Oh my god! Damn! Sonny just killed him. When Sonny looked at me for the first time, I went deaf. I couldn't hear. All I could see was Sonny with the gun in his hand. Man, what a first time to notice each other. All right, let's go inside. Let's mind our own business. He's okay. That's the main thing. I can't believe somebody would do this. Oh. We're in detectives. We'd like to ask you some questions. Police already? There was a shooting in front of the building a little while ago, and we believe your son was there. That was like two minutes ago. Yeah, what what way you doing? He don't know nothing. Daddy, I know everything. Oh, oh you dumb God. little kid. All I want you to do is pick out the person you saw with the gun in his hand. Oh, my God. These fucking cops. Everything's gonna be fine, dude. They'll be back in two minutes. You're just gonna publicly out them? Oh my god. They're gonna make him do it in front of him, too? This is terrible. Is it him? Dude, kid. Give me an answer. How about him? Oh, I have so much anxiety. How young do you learn about snitching? Give me an answer. I feel like he would have said no upstairs if he didn't have a plan to do it. Oh. This guy, how about him? Squeeze his hand or something. Is it him? 
Oh. I did a good thing for a bad man. A rat was the lowest thing anyone could be in my neighborhood, and I didn't rat. God, that could have been so dangerous. Can't believe the cops just put him in that situation. Time call momentarily. Blanchard's back. Uh. Yeah, now he's a special interest in them. Oh. I thought he was gonna beat someone with that. <laughs> no, he's just playing baseball. <laughs> Please go straight upstairs. I'm sure he won't. Get right upstairs, son, and watch the rest of the game. Jeez, just watching. Keep driving, I want to talk to you. Fuck. So it begins. Tell me what he appreciates what you and your son did for him. Glad everything worked out. He'd like to do something for you. No. I can't do this. It's not for me. I can't do it. My son is going to be disappointed. I'm sure he's been avoiding temptation of this crew for a while. I feel like that's not the last that they're gonna try. No, not at all. They offered me a job today. I think I'm 150 a week. 150 a week, would you say? She's like, 150 a week? I don't know. <laughs> $150, it's only numbers. You think I should have took it? I don't know. Oh, you get involved with those guys, next thing you know, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah. what if something happens and the numbers are delayed or something? What are these numbers? Assuming it's like betting. I lied and committed a mortal sin, and I wanted God to forgive me. I lied about worse than a murder once. I ate me on Friday once. Wait a minute, can you back up a little? <laughs> Nobody's more powerful than God. I don't know about that, Father. <laughs> but my guy's bigger than your no guy down here. You got a point. Five Hail Marys for your penance. <laughs> That's not bad, Father. What did you say? Bye, Father! <laughs> for murder? Only that? You could start over every week. Clean slate. His dad's gonna be pissed. What's your name? Clodro. You got a nickname or something? What do your friends call you? Clodro. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> call him his name. This is like his idol. Did you shoot that man over parking space? When you get old, you understand. I never felt the same way about the Yankees again. Wow. I like how both. Sonny and then his dad said like, oh, when you're older, you'll understand. But I feel like it kind of just like ruined his childhood a little, like ended it. Right. Yeah. It's like believing in Santa and then someone's just like, oh, wait, um, never mind. <laughs> Santa's real. <laughs> this guy's going to lose. Put 500 down on the kid. Right? I got 100. 500 bucks? It's a lot of bets. Come on, I hit the wall. Oh. Hey, seven. Put a thousand dollars in the sun. Thousand now? Come on, you can do it. You can do this. All right? What are the chances of him getting it back to back? I'm on a fucking win streak. Stop breathing on me, huh? Bobby, put him in the bathroom. Bathroom's gonna be packed. Oh, so it's just craps? Two two on the hot floor. You gonna get cocky? <laughs> oh. I made 11 passes in a row. 11? I don't know how much money Sonny won, but it was a lot. Hope he tips him. Right? He's gonna come home with like a grand. Two educations. One from the street and one from school. You did good. Yeah. That's it? That's it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From now on, your name is C. C? That's right, C. Damn, just renamed him? No, nickname. Sonny him. took me everywhere and he would always introduce me as his boy. Hey, Colangelo. Come on up. Oh, now he maybe just gets free. I've got some nice peaches for you, mom. Wow. Just tell Sonny that I took care of you. Man, he's already getting perks at this age? It was because of Sonny that everybody was treating me so nice. I liked it a lot. Oh. For a young kid, this is incredible. How's he supposed to understand what's going on? Your mother found this behind your drawer. It's mine that I've been saving, Dad. Six hundred dollars? Six hundred bucks? Just tell me the truth and I won't get upset. What crap games? I told you I won't get, get upset, Dad. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I worked for Sony and they gave me tips. I knew it. So right back down to the bar. Well, let's just think about this for a minute. <laughs> the money. It's like he had to do something bad. We could use it. Lorenzo, please, why do you gotta go down like this? I mean, I think it's a little late for that. Yeah, unfortunately. See, why don't you go outside? I want to talk to your father. I'll speak to my own son. Don't you wait outside. <laughs> First of all, I respect you, Lorenzo. You're a stand-up guy. It's not what you say. It's what he sees. He tried to throw away his baseball cards. 
<laughs> so impressionable. Just leave my son alone, please. Treat that kid like he's my son. He ain't your son, he's my son. Before I give you a fucking slap. Ooh. Stay away from Get the my fuck out of here. Damn. You stay away from him. Dad, listen to me. Did you hear what I said? They fear him. I'm sorry to hit you. This poor kid getting pulled in two different directions. No. And it's exactly what he said. It's like the clothes and the cars and everything that's... Yeah, so exciting and enticing. Yeah. Like sharks in the water. Sonny and my father never spoke to each other again. And I never listened to my father about staying away from him. Oh. As I grew, Sonny grew in power. And I was his friend. Damn, just like that. So we're jumping eight years? Yeah. Oh no. You bet on him? Worthless now. No! Shit! Fucking ruined it. Well, fuck yourself. Oh, get very emotional. How does this guy still have money? He <laughs> loses everything. Should have listened to him because then he could have gone against yeah, exactly. who he bet on. We finally got our own social club. The Mario test. You start pushing a head down firmly between your legs. This is your test? Goes down on the old bride yo. Then she's a pig and she can't be trusted. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on, take a ride with me. I got one trip left. Do I have to? You used to love this. A little love interest. So distracted. <laughs> she was tall, she was beautiful, but she was black. And that was a no-no in my neighborhood. I don't know if he's gonna be able to forget her that easily. Man, just eight years of this. Louis, I had to go do something. Where's my fucking money? Right in front of Sonny. Yep. See, come here. He owes me money. I come all over the fucking block. Is that you know the what? advice you give the kid? Out. Sometimes hurting somebody ain't the answer. Wow. He's out of your life for $20. You got off cheap. Forget it. <laughs> You're always right. If I was always right, I wouldn't have done 10 years in the joint. Lift weights, play cards, or get into trouble. What did you do? I read. <laughs> Nobody cares. Worry about yourself, your family, the people that are important to you. Good advice. I know. From a bad man. Is it better to be loved or feared? It's nice to be both, but it's very difficult. But if I had my choice, I would rather be feared. Hmm. Friendships that are bought with money mean nothing. Like a joke, everybody laughs. I know I'm funny, but I'm not that funny. <laughs> it's fear that keeps them loyal to me. I give them just enough where they need me, but they don't hate me. Don't forget what I'm telling you. It's very, like, top-level advice. Can't hear anything. I don't think Sonny liked that. Not in his neighborhood. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Especially to this song. Oh, it's his bar too. Oh no. I just want a couple of beers. I spoke like a gentleman. Give me the beers. Go ahead. Oh. That wasn't very nice. Now he's gotta leave. Get the fuck away. <laughs> oh, you guys are in trouble. Oh no, whenever someone locks the door. Now you just can't leave. <laughs> I will never forget the look on their faces. I bet. This time they walked into the wrong bar. Oh. Damn. Oh, the whale. Oh, shit. Oh, it's toupee. See, he hasn't done anything yet. Jeez, they're fucking these guys up. Jeez. The whole neighborhood's just kicking the shit out of him now. I'm the one who did this to you. Remember me. <laughs> Damn. Ooh. I mean, he gave him a chance to just have some nice beers and that was it. Satan's messengers? I got wrecked. Yeah. Take a look at this gun right here. See, he didn't do anything though. He just kind of hid underneath the bar. You need this. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck what is the wrong fuck? with you? Don't point the gun. Jeez, at least they understand gun safety. I'm gonna fucking shoot somebody. You know what I mean? I'll That's a gun. I wanna shoot somebody too. I want no fucking gun. Ooh. Fuck out. Get, out of here. Get over here, you. Expects better from C. 
You think you're a tough guy with these guns? This shit is not for you, and those fucking kids are gonna get you in trouble. Damn. They're jerk offs. They are. All these years, what have I been telling you? Stay in school, get two educations. I know. This is not for you. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was not expecting this level of parenting from Sonny. It's just that I already told my father I'd go with him. Well, you know what I'm saying. You can buy yourself a Damn, every piece of advice that he gives him is, like, good. Yeah, your friends are shit. Stay in school. Don't mess with guns. Nice seats, Dad. I gotta be careful. I don't get a nosebleed. Hey, these are the best I can do. What do you want from me? Seriously. Still tempted by that life, though. Listen, Sonny, we'd like you to come sit down at the ring. He's had a couple of seats for you. Oh, both of them? Tell him thanks, but we're good where we are. Tell him thanks anyway. Okay. Mm. Tell Sonny thanks anyway, but we're good where we are. Oof. You know where the seats are. Anytime during the fight. Okay? Okay, thanks. Oh, it's so hard to not dip your toes in. Do you want to sit here with you when you want to be with them? How do you think that makes me feel? Sorry if I hurt you, Dad. This is hard. I mean, his dad's 100% right. Fucking jerk. $10. You got all cheap. <laughs> I'm still gonna fucking break his face. Ooh. There's a difference between him and C. Oh. I wanted to talk to her, but she was with her friends and I was with mine. Your friends suck. It's a great song to go along with that. I mean, both Sonny and Lorenzo have told C that his friends are terrible. Mm -hmm. It's now your chance. We were alone for the first time and I knew I had to say something to her. I have an exotic name like Monique or Danielle. Danielle. I'm Jane. Jane. Jane, that's it? That's your name? <laughs> that's it. Me, I'm Cologido. Cologido? <laughs> what kind of name is that? It's Italian. It's the boot that comes down. Yeah, the boot. I was just waiting for my brother. Sometimes we walk home together. If it's no problem. I could walk you home. Oh, I hope this doesn't go bad. You don't like this hat? It's kind of funny looking. <laughs> it's never gonna wear that hat again. You have beautiful eyes. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. <laughs> He's a puddle. Do you want to go to the movies? Oh, already? It's tomorrow. All right, I'll be waiting here till tomorrow then. <laughs> Sorry if I'm saying stupid stuff, it's just that I'm so nervous. You're doing okay. <laughs> so, where are you originally from? Brooklyn. Oh, he's carrying your stuff, too. My friends call me C. Well, I like Cologne better. Oh. These books are heavy. That's why I'm glad you're carrying them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't walk you all the way home. Tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. You're getting better. <laughs> oh, fuck. Set that. Come on, Set. What the hell was that? <laughs> it's like an advanced version of rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Why don't you just leave them alone? They're fucking bothering me. They ain't bothering me. What are you doing? What the fuck? Stupid fucking kids. See, don't do anything. God damn, what happens if one of those guys is the girl's brother? At least C didn't do anything and stopped him. He's my friend, you know, I just... Shitty friends. These kids could hurt you, you gotta think for yourself. Yeah, you gotta ditch these kids. You like this girl? I do, but I don't wanna hear all the guys. I don't wanna hear Fuck their mouths. Fuck kids. Yeah. You gotta do what your heart tells you to do. Damn, always great advice from Sunny. Maybe this girl, she put wind in yourselves. Just back up all the way there. <laughs> Seriously. Tomorrow you borrow my car. You don't lend anybody your car. It's all right, I'm gonna lend you my car. Wow. And then you give her the test. What, the Mario test? Mario, Mario's a fucking psycho. <laughs> <laughs> if she doesn't reach over and lift up that button, that means she's a selfish broad. The door test, that's what counts. And it's a better test than Mario's <laughs> stupid test. Getting all ready for his date. <laughs> Comes to marriage, I just think we should marry within our own, that's all. Yeah, what would you say if I want to go out with a colored girl? Well, you would never do that. You never know, this girl might be one of the great ones. Be careful. Damn, that wasn't as good as Sonny's advice. <laughs> no. You're ready. Man, don't damage this car. Is someone else in the car? Yeah. My brother got beat up in your neighborhood. Fuck it was. You did that to his face. Jane, I didn't touch your brother, I swear to God. Okay, we'll see. Wait! I mean, he held him down. 
But he was like, I'm just stay there. I'm not trying to hurt you. Fucking do anything. Yes, you did. Fuck you, you fuck. Oh, well, there goes that. See, I'm talking about just like the rest of them. Damn, he didn't do anything and he stopped his slick back head friend from doing anything more. Just surrounding himself with such awful people. Yeah, if he would have ditched those friends a while ago, this would have been fine. So many things going wrong right now. What happened with the girl? Everything went wrong. You wanna go to Trotters with us? Maybe next time, Sonny. His asshole friends fucked this all up. Now he's gonna get it at home. Yeah. I don't want you driving this car around. I don't like yeah, that. Mood. My mother and father came to this country with nothing. And they died with Oof. They tried to give me a better life, and that's what I'm trying to do. What better life? Don't take it out of me because you're a bus driver. The working man is a sucker. It's just a shit day for everyone. Black motherfuckers are doing to our car. Look, come on, get in the car. We no, get away from these guys. We lifted up the hood and there was something on the engine. You tell me. What? How the fuck that got on there? Don't lie to me. Why would I want to hurt you? You've been like a father to me. Fuck, his dad was right. Sonny can't trust anyone. Who did that, though? Like, how long was it in the car for? Put your hands on me, I'll stick you in the fucking ground. Oh. Next time, find out what's going on before you open your mouth. I mean, all he did was ask what happened with his son. No. God damn it, these kids are the worst. Where'd you get this car? Don't worry about it. So you stole it. What's that smell? Oh my god. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, what the hell? These guys are the dumbest. I was smiling too, but I was dying inside. Then leave. What was I gonna say? Let me out, I'm afraid. Don't waste your talent, son. Keep your head seat. Yeah, both of them. Oh, thank god. Stay out of the car. Sonny, come on, he's relaxed. Oh. God, thank God he got him out of there. Don't you think it could have been in the car when I picked it up? And that me and Jane could have got killed? Yeah. Don't you trust anybody? No. It's a horrible way to live. That's why he doesn't want you to live this life. My brother told me the truth. You did try to help him. Told you. <laughs> told you. Oh, you looking at? Mind your own damn business. Get back in your house. <laughs> I want to be with you, and I don't care what anybody says. That's not a kiss. <laughs> This is a kiss. Did you know how to make sauce? You know, sauce for macaroni. Shut up. <laughs> is that his test? Sauce test? My brother didn't mean Your brother! Where's your car? Give me the keys. Oh, fuck. They're still potentially under attack. Oh. Oh. She passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> she, why were you screaming back there? What are you talking about? Uh, never mind. It's an Italian thing. Oh, I feel like they're very late, though. It might be too late. Yeah, they're already here. Oh my god. Fuck. Oh! Oh my god. See, you could have been in there. Oh, well, thank God those shit. shitty friends are gone. There's your friends. Willie, are you alright? Oh, thank God he's alive. You okay? Yeah, man. Listen, I'm sorry. It's cool, man. The police want to go crazy. Go. See, he's just always in such a shit spot. I'm so sick. I'll give you the 20 next week. <laughs> Forget the 20. He <laughs> said, don't worry about it. See, come on. Oh my god, it's past. Seriously. All of a sudden, out of all these smiling faces, there was this one face. Uh-oh. He wasn't smiling, and nobody could see him but me. Oh no, Sonny's about to get taken out? No! Oh. Oh my god. There was like so much foreshadowing that something bad was going to happen. The guy that killed but Sonny damn. was the son of the man that he killed eight years earlier. No <gasps> way. Full circle. Ooh, I just got the chills. It was just like Sonny said it would be. Nobody cares. Just moving on. Listen, Jerry, could you just give me a couple more minutes? The only person that actually cared. She passed the test. That's what I wanted to tell you. 
She might be my first great one. I want to thank you for saving my life. Sorry, I thought I was alone. I'm just thinking out loud. Yo, Pesci. Sonny told me all about you. He saved my life too once. You don't remember me, do you? You don't remember this? Oh, oh. shit. You were the guy that got here with the baseball bat, right? I'm going to be in the neighborhood now, taking care of things. You boss? You need anything, you come to the bar and you see me. Anything. All right. Damn, it was Joe Pesci the whole time? Dad, um, what are you doing here? Dad, I'm sorry if I ever hurt you in any way. I want to thank you for saving my kid's life. But I was just mad at you because you made him grow up so fast. Nobody cares, huh? You were wrong about that one. Wasted talent. See you around, Sonny. Man, bringing up stuff that Sonny said, bringing up stuff that his dad said, all coming together. The saddest thing in life is wasted talent. And the choices that you make will shape your life forever. This is just another Bronx tale. Wow. Dedicated to his dad. All right. That was a Bronx tale. What'd you think? I thought that was fantastic. Definitely assumed Robert De Niro was going to have a bigger role. Yeah, I mean, that's a very interesting movie for Robert De Niro. First of all, directed it, had no idea. No idea. Um, I don't know if we've seen anything else that he's directed. I don't think that we have. And I don't know what his director catalog looks like. No, if no he's idea. Done a lot, but so good. I mean, he definitely has like a distinct style and I just, I think it was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the directing was fantastic and then he was fantastic in it, even though he had a very, you know, I guess, minimal role, kind of. Not really, I mean, very influential. Yeah. But he wasn't in the movie as much as you would think. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't the mafia guy. He's a, a bus driver. Young C and Teenage C were both fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we've seen older C, I guess, I don't know if I'm gonna butcher his name, Lilo Bronk. Broncado? Sure, yeah, a little Broncado. We saw him in The Sopranos for maybe two seasons, maybe just one. I think the first two seasons. Something like that. And he played a very different character <laughs> in The Sopranos, but man, he was fantastic. And Francis Capra was the young C, and he was so good. Yeah. Like he was so mature and he just played like the style of the time and still being like a mischievous kid, but he was still very mature. He was just so good and he was so like endearing. So it's no wonder that Sonny like gravitated towards him. Right. Sonny he was also fantastic. We've seen him in at least one other thing. Yeah, I mean, he's very familiar. Yeah, I can't put my finger on it, but we have seen him a decent amount. And all of it is just like kind of unexpected. I wasn't expecting the story to kind of one be just about C. Right. Um, but I also wasn't expecting like this like dual father relationship. And it was also very interesting. It was a dual father relationship, yet they spoke a lot of the same stuff. They just had two different lives. Yeah, and you know, Sonny was very protective over C and he didn't want that life for him. Yeah, I mean, there's so many opportunities where you would think like, oh my God, he's just recruiting, you know, another soldier or something from a young age. But time after time, Sonny gave great advice. I mean, he, just like Lorenzo, was like, your friends are bad. You gotta stay away from your friends. Stay in school. Like, don't mess with guns. This life is not for you. You know, and there was actually a few times where Sonny, in my opinion, gave better advice for certain situations than Lorenzo did. So, I mean, it was just this incredible back and forth, yet it's not like it was drastically opposing ideas or anything. It was really just came down to the lifestyle. Lorenzo was, you know, a hard worker, blue collar, you know, bus driver. And then Sonny was obviously, you know, in the mafia. So it was just the lifestyles that were, were different, but the advice was shockingly similar. Yeah, in most situations, yeah. not all. But it was crazy to just see the comparison of the two, because like you said, the bottom line is they both wanted C to have a good life and to succeed and to not get involved with the wrong people, even though you could consider Sunny being the wrong people. Yeah, exactly. So I just, I think that was really cool. Like he really got like two father figures who both really did want the best for him. And obviously Lorenzo, he has 
many years overseas. And like they both kept saying, you'll understand when you're older. Lorenzo had this like, I don't know how to say, like a moral code that he was just like refusing to cross that line, which yeah. is completely understandable. Like he didn't want to get involved. Like even his wife, you know, she was like, hey, like, $150 a week, that's good money, or $600, we could do a lot with this. Like, right. I think that's why Lorenzo had to be so careful mm -hmm. with everything because it is a very slippery slope. Yes. You start taking $600 here, $150 here, before you know it, you're in deep with this crew. And, you know, there was a lot of things that Lorenzo said that came true, specifically the fact that Sonny lives a life where he can't trust anyone, and the second that he feels in danger by you, he's gonna turn on you. And that almost immediately came true when Sonny thought that C planted a bomb in his car. Yeah, that was such a hard scene to watch because you really see C just trust Sonny. And as much as Lorenzo has tried to tell him and exactly what you just said, like Sonny is Sonny. Like he, he's a boss. He has his own life and he has a lot of enemies. So he doesn't trust anybody. And it was heartbreaking to see C break down when Sonny's like accusing him. The entire kind of theme of Sonny from his own perspective and from Lorenzo's is fear. He wants people to fear him. And in that moment, like he's in his face, everything, that wasn't fear. Like C did not fear him. He was so upset and heartbroken that he would think that C would do that to him. I mean, kind of like the end, Sonny always said that nobody cares. Well, C did care. Mm -hmm. C was maybe the only person who did care. So when Sonny brings out that fear aspect and C responds in just like shame and the fact that Sonny doesn't trust him. Mm -hmm. You could even see it a little bit on Sonny's face. Like after he hit him a few times, kind of be like, well, fuck, what am I doing here? Yeah. Like, this is kind of like my son mm -hmm. that I'm accusing of. And like, to the fact that he was even questioning if Jane even existed, like, really? You're gonna go this whole time and C is gonna be the one that takes you out? But that's the world that Sonny lives in. Mm -hmm. That's the world that Sonny didn't want for C, and that's the world that Lorenzo didn't want for C. Mm -hmm. So, really not what I expected at all. No. Not even remotely close, if I had to guess what a Bronx Tale was going to be about. No. I mean, because you would think that there would be one or the other that, you know, Sonny is drawing him to a life of crime and Lorenzo's drawing him to a life of normalcy, but they were both trying to pull him in the same direction. It's just whose advice was he going to take in that moment? It was also interesting that we didn't really see much of Lorenzo and Sonny interact with each other for the entire film. You know, we had this moment in the beginning where Lorenzo is clearly afraid when C is put in a position by the cops and having to like name someone. That was so bad. That was anxiety inducing. <laughs> and the fact that Lorenzo taught C at such a young age, like don't be a rat. And after he does that, then says like, sometimes you have to protect the bad people or something. Yeah, sometimes you have to do like bad things or you have to do things even though that doesn't feel right or you yeah. did a, a good thing for a bad guy. That's what it was, yeah. a good thing for a bad guy. And I think in that moment, C was like confused because he's like, wait a minute, like you always told me not to be a rat and that's what I did. But I think it hit him when he had to see the funeral. I think that's what this whole movie is. It's just influence and the people that you surround yourself with. Yes. I mean, it's Lorenzo giving advice. It's Sonny giving advice. It's what happens to C's life based off of the friends that he has. Yeah. Even though he knows these people are bad, he has this feeling where he can't escape them because these are the people of his neighborhood. Yeah. Like the influence from the church, like how he, you know, saw the funeral and starts feeling bad and needs to go to confession. Mm -hmm. It's just how either lucky or unlucky you are growing up, depending who is the one giving you advice or who is in your like immediate circle. It's a lot of circumstance of who you're surrounded with. Yeah. And I felt pretty proud of myself at the very end of the movie when Lorenzo comes in, he talks to Sonny and it basically was like, you made my son grow up quick. And I said that very early. Oh uh, yeah? I said that right in the very beginning when he basically didn't rat him out, that I was like, damn, like there's a change in him. Like he's not this innocent kid anymore. When that moment came up at the end there, I was thinking of the baseball situation where he was like, 
you think this baseball player cares about you? And then how, like the next day he, you know, like sold his baseball cards or something like that. Yeah, it's like he took his innocence. Yeah, he really did make him grow up way too quick. And I mean, like Lorenzo said, it's not like he ever really hated Sonny. Mm -mm. It's not like they really had like these massive issues from the past or anything. It's just the world that he was in was a world that he wanted to protect C from. Mm -hmm. And you know, bad stuff is just inevitable in this world. Even as good of a guy that Sonny was, and you don't really fully know the circumstances behind the car accident parking situation. Like mm -hmm. why did Sonny kill that guy? Right. For all you know, that guy who he killed was on a war path ready to kill Joe Pesci or something. And mm -hmm. maybe that was the only option or something. You don't really fully know. But from that point on, everything that Sonny does is remarkably good. Even like the biker situation, like he even was like, okay, you know, you guys ask like gentlemen, have a few beers and be on your way. And he gave them a chance and they fucked it up. For Sonny to still be this relatively good person in this bad world, he still ended up getting shot. And like that could be a situation where maybe C was in the car with Sonny one day and that bomb could have gone off or something. Like that's the fear that Lorenzo had. Yeah, exactly. It was a fear with Sonny, but also like you said, who he surrounds himself with, his friends end up being killed for a situation that C was in and yeah. Sonny saved him from. Yeah, so bad. I mean, even in that situation, C is like, I am smiling on the outside, but I'm dying on the inside. I want to get out of this car. Mm -hmm. It was just so stressful. I mean, this movie was top notch in terms of just freaking you out. Absolutely. It, there was so much anxiety in so many of the moments because you could see what was coming. I also didn't know going into this that this was gonna be kind of like a, I don't wanna say a time piece because I feel like that sounds like it's like a- Like 1700s or <laughs> something. Yeah, like a super old setting, but we are set in the 60s. Um, I feel like we've seen a number of films um, that take place then. So race is always such a huge part of it. Yeah. And, you know, we're focused on this like Italian family. And it's funny because you kind of also have that connection with The Sopranos that we're currently watching. When we're watching in The Sopranos, this is in the 90s and it, it brings back like those roots. Yeah, Sopranos now I think is in the 2000s by it now. It might, yeah, or season three at this point. But this like racial, war in the Bronx here and you know everyone they just hate each other and to see obviously C's friends just take it to another level yeah beating up those boys in the street and see like it's hard because he didn't want to be a part of it but he also didn't stop it not, um not fully I mean he helped a little bit yeah but I was not expecting this like heavy race part of the story also, but bringing up Sopranos, it's even like these ways don't die because you have Tony Soprano who talks about like, no, like I don't hate them. It's just they stay with, with them and we stay with us. Mm -hmm. And that's what Lorenzo said too, where it's like, I, I'm cool with everyone on the bus that I drive with. I'm not prejudiced, but you know, we marry our own and they marry their own. And it's just yeah. like, what is this mentality here? Yeah, I mean, you, you're seeing like a, this like segregation in all aspects of the film. Yeah. Really, the only thing that you're not is they're in school together. And that's when Sonny has the opportunity to talk to Jane. But even with that opportunity, he has to wait until her friends are gone, his friends are gone. Like it's all just so sneaky feeling, which obviously sucks to see because Sonny just, really had that connection right off the bat with Jane. I mean, you see the beautiful moments, which is C and Jane. Mm -hmm. And you see them walking and it's so sweet. And he's carrying her books and stuff. And you want that to be just what everything is. But then you also have the moments of when they're walking, there's people who are staring, who are glancing, who are driving by. C can only walk her so far before yeah. having to be turned around. Mm -hmm. Even when Jane comes to his neighborhood, you know, he's yelling at the old woman in the window who just can't stop watching. Yeah. Like it's unfortunate, but the movie does such an amazing job giving you this very beautiful and romantic storyline surrounded by just a ton of hatred. Yeah. But I mean, for me, one of the best moments of the movie 
was uh, the test was when when he's behind the car and she reaches over to open and he's just like, yeah, but that was perfect. That was so good. I mean, obviously Sonny is so influential in C's life. We had, I think it was Mario with his Oh, his stupid, stupid yeah. <laughs> test. The first thing that C says is like, oh, Mario's test? And he's like, no, like, fuck that guy. No, it's <laughs> yeah. not Mario. But it was just such like an interesting test. And the fact that you just see him walk around the car and he's literally face in the back window. Yeah looking in it's like slow motion watching her unlock the car for him it was just such a sweet moment in the midst of all this chaos um because we know what's about to happen we know that they're going to the other side of town and it's obvious that it's too late like this is well after his friends had left right so you just know it's gonna be bad but you just have like a moment of like sweet connection between the two of them. And it, it reminds me of a recent uh, Sopranos episode too, where Junior was just like, you know, when you're steering the ship, sometimes it's smooth, sometimes you hit the rocks, but you have to find like the beautiful moments in between and stuff. And I mean, yeah, there was a ton of garbage in this movie, yet we had all of these really sweet moments, mm -hmm. you know, with the dad taking him for ice cream or to the baseball game, or, you know, just those like little car rides in the bus and mm -hmm. stuff. like. There was a lot of really pretty, you know, heartwarming moments, but you know, this world that they live in was just rough. Yeah, and I think my favorite part of the film was watching C grow up, but he was still himself. He was still the sweet kid that we saw in the beginning and he didn't, I mean, we say that he, he had to grow up fast and he maybe lost a little bit of that innocence in growing up, which just happens, but he also got to kind of keep a little bit of it, which was just really cool to see. I mean, the moments that he was with his dad and even at the very end there, saying that he cared about Sonny and it wasn't just that nobody cared, but also the moments with his dad when he apologized if he ever made him feel kind of less than or when they were at the wrestling match and he was like no like i'm gonna stay up here with you right even though lorenzo kind of was gonna try to push him away yeah he was pushing him but so it's just nice to see that c <laughs> kind of stayed true to himself with kind of the influence from lorenzo and sunny yeah so uh, remarkably even with murder at the end and everything going on it feels like a happy ending it yeah. feels like C had a lot of things click and really learned a lot. And kind of like how Sonny said, I mean, he hopefully still has his school education, but like he has the street education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's hopefully prepared to navigate this world on his own at this point and hopefully with Jane. There's a lot of hope left in this. And even with the crazy introduction of Joe Pesci at the end, mm -hmm. where he's clearly taking over the business down here, mm -hmm. you know, gave him a chance like, hey, come by the bar if you ever need anything. And C was like, I think I'm gonna stay away from the bar for a while. And Joe Pesci was just like, nah, I totally get it. Whenever you need anything, I'm here. But if not, that's cool. Like you do your own thing. Yeah, and I think that speaks a lot for the relationship that C had with Sunny. Yeah. It was the relationship with Sunny. It wasn't about that life and the flashy things that Lorenzo was worried about, it was the connection he had with Sonny. And I'm sure Sonny, you know, told other people like Joe Pesci, like, you don't fuck with this kid. Yeah. Like, if he doesn't want to be involved, you don't involve him. Yeah, but look out for him. Right. So, fantastic. I really enjoyed this film. I would be very curious to see what other Robert De Niro directed films. I, I honestly don't know of any. I mean, I didn't even know about this one, so. Yeah, we've had a great time visiting his series. So so I would be very interested to see if there's anything else that he directed. Yeah, I mean, remarkably for me, this is like a very great coming of age story. Yeah. Of like a lot of harsh lessons learned, but a lot of great lessons learned too. Mm -hmm. So I had a great time with this. Me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction for this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you'd like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.